All right, everybody. Today we're going to take a look at type 2 ionic compounds. Type 2 ionic compounds come from metals that are, that are in the transition metals family. If we take a look here, we have two different compounds, Fe2O3 and FeO. According to our rules that we have right now for type 1 compounds, they both would be called iron oxide. And we really just can't have that, can we? If you take a look at the two substances, they're clearly two different colors. And the formulas, while they have both iron and oxygen in them, they have them in two different ratios. So there's something going on here with our transition metals. And in fact, the transition metals, we learned way back uh, in the periodic table movie, that they don't have a particular pattern. This is because the majority of them obtain what we call multiple oxidation states. The translation for that is simply that they get more than one kind of charge. So you learned in the video that uh, metals will lose one to four uh, valence electrons. These metals will change it up as they go depending on the situation. Let's inv investigate this a little further. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Please copy down the examples and then we'll talk about them. Got it? Good. All right, so here we have a compound Cu3N2. So we have to decide about copper now. What I mean by that is when you take a look at copper here, Copper is in the transition metal area, and it doesn't follow a pattern. We know that group one elements get a plus one charge because they lose one valence electron. Group two elements get a plus two charge because they lose two electrons. Group 13 loses three, so they get a plus three charge. But these guys we learned don't have a particular pattern. So we need something else now. Oops, sorry. And that's something else is this. We have what we call a list of uh, multivalence charges on our type 2 metals or our transition metals. And if you look here, copper can either be a plus 1 charge, copper 1 or cuprous, or a plus two charge, copper two or cupric. You will get this worksheet, uh, this handout, for you to use. Um, there's also a list in your book as well until you get to this sheet. All right. So how do we decide which copper we're working with when we're trying to name it? There's only one option for us. We have to look at the nitrogen, okay? So when we take a look at the nitrogen and its position, nitrogen is in group 15. It has five valence electrons, meaning that it needs three more. So it's going to get a negative three charge. Oops, grabbed too much there. Sorry, guys. So since we know that the nitrogen has a negative 3 charge, we also know that we have 2 of them for a total negative charge of negative 6. Couple that with the fact that we know that we have 3 coppers, we need an overall total positive charge of positive 6 in order to balance out the negative 6. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we've got 3 plus 2 charges. So when we go to name this, now we know that we're working with copper 2 or cupric. Now there's two different names for a number of these, copper 2 or cupric, because of the Latin naming system that used to be in place. When we switched over to 
the English system, we use Roman numerals. Um, for the most part, I prefer us using the Latin names, but I won't mark you wrong if you use the Roman numerals. So you would be marked correct if you called this, well, let's erase this work real quick here. Sorry, guys. Can't keep all of this. All right. So we know that we have these two nitrogens with the negative three charge. So that balances out. So we call this cupric. nitride or you can call it copper 2 nitride okay so let's take a look at the next example here we're taking a look at a compound containing tin and oxygen and in this particular case when we take a look at the periodic table oops that's not what I wanted to do sorry tin actually is not in the uh, transition metals, but it is in group 14. And what do you know about group 14? That's right. It has four valence electrons, which means its shell is half full. And when we learned about group 14, we learned that those four valence electrons are either going to go or four more are going to come. And here for tin and lead, this results in the ability for these two metals to either give two electrons away because they're in the 2p range here, okay? Or they could give up to four away, okay? All four valence electrons. It just simply just depends on the situation. And so when we're looking here at tin two, or excuse me, at tin and oxygen, we have to look at the oxygen again because we don't know which, which tin it is. If we look here, You'll take a look here and we can either have stannous or tin 2 or we have the possibility of stannic or tin 4. So we have to figure this out based on oxygen. So when we take a look at oxygen, it's in group 16. So it has six valence electrons, needs two more. And we happen to have two of oxygens here. So this tells us that we have two oxygens with a negative two charge and only one tin. Well, the total negative charge with both oxygens is a negative four. So this tin must be a plus four charge. So when we go to name it, We can either use the stannic or the tin four, okay? So, again, we have the SN, and we knew that we had two oxygens, so this must be a plus four. So we either say that we have stannic oxide, or we call it tin four oxide. Now, writing the formulas for type two compounds is actually easier if the Roman numerals are given. Of course, I'm not giving you Roman numerals. I'm giving you the Latin names, so you will have to look them up. But still, it's fairly easy. So if we take a look at this first example, please make sure you take a minute and write them both down. This first example asks us to write the formula for cuprous oxide. So when we look up here, we first our first clue here is cuprous. This is not something that we've been using on the periodic table, and it's not an element name. So this tells you that you're going to go to your polyatomic ion sheet, 
We'll learn more about polyatomic ions in another lesson. But we're looking up cuprous here, and when we start looking, we see that cuprous is Cu with a plus one charge. So this becomes extremely easy for us that we can just write Cu with a plus one, okay? And oxide comes from oxygen. Again, it's in group 16, has six valence electrons. It's going to get a negative one charge. So oxygen, or excuse me, negative two charge. So this tells us that we're going to need two, uh, two copper ions, another one, right? Now our charges get balanced out like we learned the other day. And our final formula is Cu2O. Not too bad. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. Plumbus bromide. Okay, plumbus is not something that we're familiar with coming from the periodic table. So that tells us we're going to be looking up something here on our sheet. And when we start scrolling through it, sure enough, plumbus is lead to or Pb with a plus 2 charge. So when we do this, we write Pb with a plus 2 charge. And then bromide comes from bromine. And bromine is right here, group 17. It's a halogen. And it has a negative 1 charge because it has 7 valence electrons. And it needs just one more. So we put bromine. But the negative 1 charge does not offset or balance the positive 2 charge. So we're going to need a second bromine in order to balance this out. So our final formula is going to be PbBr2. Okay, in your lesson today, you have learned about type 2 compounds from the transition metals, including tin and lead. Here we have our starting problem. And you're going to be asked here in just a second to write the names of both of these compounds. Have a great evening.